Hey everyone, it's Matt from The Catch Company here. When it's hot and sticky in the middle of the summer like this, there's nothing better than putting on an old pair of tennis shoes, or Crocs in my case, and hitting the river and chasing after some feisty bass and other game fish. This month for Catch Company, we put together an awesome bundle packed with five different baits that'll help you catch whatever swims in the river near you. Let's check it out. The first bait of this bundle is the jointed number seven Rapala. This is a classic river bait. I noticed that when we got here, there's a lot of ripples and some small bait fish swimming around. This is like has been a staple for people that fish in rivers for bass for decades. It's awesome and fast moving current for a couple different reasons. Number one, you can retrieve it at a lot of different depths. Burn it right across the surface since it's highly buoyant, but you can also lower your rod tip and bring it deeper into the water column. When you pause it, it floats to the surface very quickly. Secondly, this bait looks really good even when it's just floating with the current. Oftentimes I'll dead stick it in the middle of the current and just let it drift down the rocks and over the, over the rocks and ripples and fish will come up and attack it then. It still has that good action when it's drifting because it's got this joint in the middle. Finally, it's the perfect size for catching all sorts of game fish, not just bass. Walleye, pike, catfish even will come up and hit this. Let's see if we can catch some fish in this little ripple area right here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is cast this bait upstream at about a 45 degree angle and then bring it back to you. It's just gonna dance very slowly in the water column as you, as you retrieve it. So I cast it about a 45 degree angle up into the current and immediately begin my retrieve. Every once in a while I'll just completely dead stick it and let it drift closer to us. It's important to use pretty light action gear when you're casting a bait this small. I'm using a medium action spinning rod, 10 pound braid so I can cast pretty far, and an eight pound fluorocarbon leader, just so I can make sure I can get this small bait out as far as I want to. And it may look like I'm reeling really fast, but I'm actually just reeling it fast enough to keep working the current. It's not very often that a bait fish comes from behind the fish. So if you're trying to mimic natural bait fish, you want to make sure you're casting into the current and bringing it towards you. In the vast majority of rivers and streams across the country, the primary forage base is a crawfish. So for this month's Catch Cow Bundle, we featured a Strike King Rage Tail Rage Craw. This is the full-size green pumpkin. You can also downsize to the uh, smaller baby Rage Craw, but I actually like the larger one, especially in kind of muddier waters, the claws are much larger so they add off add a lot more action. We've got that paired with a Nichols Lures quarter ounce screwball shaky head. Let me show you how to rig it up. Basically just take the end of this crawfish, twist it on, like so, until it's snug against the bait. There's a nice hook slot here. That I'm going to put the hook through that hook slot and back out at the body. And then since there's a lot of rocks and other cover here, I'm gonna skin hook the hook back through. If you wanna downsize your presentation a little bit, you can bite off one of these rings or cut off one of these rings and make it a little bit smaller. But I'm gonna go with the full size today. In addition, I really like this Nichols uh, screwball shaky head because it's got a nice, unique, wide gap right here so that when a fish bites, there's plenty of room for the bait to slide up and you to get a good hook set. My setup for the Strike King Rage Craw is a seven foot six, medium action bait casting rod, high speed bait casting reel, and 12 pound fluorocarbon line. Basically, when I'm wading rivers and streams, I'm not gonna bring a whole lot of gear with me, so I only bring one spinning rod and one bait casting rod. I like to have a bait casting rod for fishing this particular setup, because there is a lot of plastic on this cross, so there's a lot of bait that you need to get the hook point through when you set the hook into a fish. And I got a lot more backbone here to set it, get a good hook set in a fish than I do with a spinning rod. What you'll see in front of me here is some floating foam and then some rapids. Right in between is kind of a slack area. Oftentimes those fish will hang out there to ambush any bait fish that swim overhead or crawfish that swim overhead. I'm gonna try to cast my crawfish, the rage craw, right in that slack area and see if we can catch any fish that way. The way I'm gonna work this rage craw is let it get to the bottom, then basically just try to do whatever I can to mimic a crawfish. In this case, it means just drag it bump it into rocks on the bottom and let it come with the current. I do feel a lot of rocks at the bottom, which is generally a good indicator that there are crawfish in the area also. 
I think I got the right bait tied on. Green pumpkin is a great all-around color. It does a good job of mimicking fit, uh, crawfish all over the country. When you get hung up like this, you can easily go walk out and get it hung unhung, or you can do the bone arrow trick, which I like to do like this. And if it doesn't come loose, you just walk out and get it. And whenever that happens in the river, you make sure to check your line, because oftentimes you can get a scuff in the line and that can lead to heartbreak, especially if you hook into a big fish later. Check my line, all good, ready to go back out there. When I walked out there to get that loose, I noticed that it was kind of deep. That usually means that those fish will congregate there, especially in the hot summer months. In rivers and streams like this, you'll often find laid down cover like this from recent floods. I love pitching and flipping a rage craw on a shaky head to try to pull some of those bigger fish out of there. In a lot of rivers, that's where you'll find largemouth or even spotted bass. Let's see if there's anything in this log jam. I'll usually start at the root and bring it out this way. And since we're waiting, the nice thing is you don't have to be afraid of getting hung up. You can always go over and get it. Now that I've fished the root ball and with no bites, I'm gonna to move to the top of the tree and see if there's any fish over there. Again though, I wanna walk down current and then cast upstream towards the tree because that's the most natural movement of any sort of bait fish or crawfish. So I found a spot here. I'm just gonna flip parallel to this branch down. What's really cool about striking rage tail products for fish and rivers is that all these soft plastics have a really strong coffee scent. I used to think it was kind of funny, but honestly, they've made believers out of me. And then when you're fishing uh, rivers like this that have just a little bit of stain to them, scent can often be the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. Don't be afraid to throw it in really thick cover. That's oftentimes where those fish are hanging out, taking a break from the current. Now that I've fished this log jam pretty, pretty well, I'm gonna cast out into the ripples and see if there's anything that's moved out to feed. I'm really excited about this next bait. It's the classical leader from Lucky Craft. It's almost impossible to find in, in the United States, but apparently it's one of their best sellers in Japan. I really like this for the river because it's got that awesome matted crawfish color. And even in the details of the bill, you can see tiny little pinchers in the front. It comes with super sticky hooks and the perfect size for the river, kind of small. The front hook is a little bit bigger. I'm just searching for active water right now, looking for fish. I'm just gonna start fan casting this all over the place. It's a really good bait to just travel and move and find active fish. Let's see if we can find any. There's a couple reasons I really like this bait in particular. Number one, it's pretty weedless. That bill is uh, pretty durable. It's not gonna break when you hit it against a rock. Secondly, it hunts. So you'll hear that oftentimes about different other crankbaits, but this one doesn't come straight back to you with a wobble. Instead, it'll kick off to the side every once in a while. And that unique action often triggers bites from inactive fish. When I fish this crankbait, I'm gonna to wanna to do the same thing I do with other baits and throw at least at a 45 degree angle upstream. So I'm gonna throw it up towards this tree on the shade line and just look for active fish. You'll see, I'm gonna retrieve this pretty fast. I'm trying to trigger these summertime bass into biting. Plus, I wanna keep it really mo moving fast with the current so that it keeps the action. This looks just like a scurrying crawfish going across the bottom. I'm fishing this on that same setup I was fishing the Rage Craw. A seven foot six medium action uh, bait casting rod. Just keep things simple. You don't need to overthink it and bring a bunch of different rods with you to the water. The cool thing about this crane bait is you can control the depth really easily. If I want to fish it shallow, I'll just move my rod tip up like this. 
And if I want to fish deep, I'll just drop my rod tip down. You can adjust the, the depth that it dives by like three feet by doing that. I'm just going to bring it right through that trough. Kind of reading the water, I know that it's kind of deep out there. It's very aerated water too, which is important in the summer months. Those fish don't want to be in stagnant water. It's got a nice wide wobble, super frantic action, and that's what makes it a perfect search bait when you're fishing rivers. Last but not least, it's a Blue Fox Vibrich Spinner. This is a classic river and stream bait that catches all sorts of different species from bass, bluegill, panfish, even catfish. I've caught lots of catfish on these things. It does a great job of mimicking different bait fish throughout the water. And let me tell you, I've caught more fish on this than probably any other bait in my tackle box. Let's see if we can catch anything before we leave today. It's important to use the right gear with this bait. That's why I've got this medium action spinning rod. It's my nice all around spinning rod for fishing rivers and streams. You can cast small baits like this pretty easily without overpowering the lure. You know, it's not rocket science, but it's one of the easiest and most fun ways to catch fish. Plus, it's really effective. Oh, there's a fish right there. Got a small mouth on, it looks like a little one. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I was getting nervous we were gonna get skunked, but it's not a giant, but it's a fish. The Blue Fox Vibrate Spinner comes through in the clutch. It is not a big one, that's for sure, but they are so fun when you're fishing in these small rivers and streams. Let's see if we can get him unhooked and get him back in the water. Wow, this is awesome. Let's get this little guy back in the water. Beautiful specimen. See you later. Oh, there he goes. You know, there's just really no wrong way to fish this inline spinner. Well, that's all the time we've got today, folks. We hope you enjoy all the products in this month's Catch Go Bundle, the Rivers and Streams kit. Get you a kit and get out there and catch some fish. Until next time, tight lines. That is refreshing.